Steve Trucker here. We're just trying something a little bit different today. I've got you on my DSLR, so if it's a little bit unsteady, I do apologise. But the quality should be quite good. So, well, today we're going to do a truck tour review. I'm going to start off inside because it's a little bit windy outside. So, uh, if I do get a bit obscured, that's probably why. So, We'll start off in the cab today, a bit different to how you normally start a truck review off, normally start out from the outside. Or I might mix it up, let's we'll see how we go. So, what are we in? We are in a 2019 DAF XF... What's the really tall cab one? You probably know it, the XX... Not XX, I'm thinking the Volvo thing, aren't I? Um, Super Space Cab, I think it is. It's the one that's the really tall one. Marginally nearly fully equipped. There is, it misses a few little things, but we'll see. It's no dramas what it isn't equipped with. It's very well equipped, in other words. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spin this around to the frontal view. Okay, this is the uh, driver's area, just here, so we'll just carefully walk around. I'm sorry if it's not fully scale, you are minimum zoom. We've got our nerve system, obviously my phone. Part of my vlogging layout, my DJI, my mascots, my nameplate, and my Sony camera. And let's have a look at looks at the dash. Let's turn it on. So sorry about this, guys. Just put some power onto her. We're gonna start it up just yet. Nothing should play. That's good. Let's just turn the fans down. Yeah, so that's the dash there, you get DAF XF, which comes up, it does disappear, I haven't found to keep the DAF up yet. And so you can go into the options there, you've got your like driving uh, support options there, services, vehicle info, trip info, and settings. So just for a rough example, inside the truck, you've got air support, soot filter, that's your axle loads, battery status, you've got the eco driving, like your PTO, so it gives all your statistics in there, like how much you've burnt, etc. And obviously services, which as you've in, I'm not going to show you that, next service, and total fuel. So we'll just go out of that for the moment. You know, your normal daf dash. Next door to it, we got the uh, parking brake, obviously, and entertainment system. This is on Apple CarPlay, so we'll just demonstrate all into the main options like that. So you got your DAB, you can do your mirroring on there as well between your phone so you can even watch YouTube on this if you want to, not while you're driving though, I must highlight. you got all your buttons here, your particulate filter, oh, no, was that your exhaust brake thing? I forgot which one that is, that's your lane departure, EBUS, which uh, I think that's part of your emergency stopping system, traction, Subtraction. Yeah, that's uh, also level. Hill hold. Lock your rear diffs. Beacon. Your night and day modes. Tanker mode. I still need to learn what tanker mode does. I assume I think it sorts out the gears that you're in. So when you're loaded, it stops the gears and jut when the liquid surges from changing gears unnecessarily. Axle up and weight transfer button. That's your ports to plug in for your Apple CarPlay. Gear selector for the auto box. Obviously self-explanatory. Drive, crawler forward gear, neutral, reverse and rev crawler reverse. Obviously hazards. That's a control dial just there to control the dash. 
He also down here have got the PTO takeoff on the right of the dash. You got your working light. I think that's your turn your lights off. I believe. Obviously your light controls. Obviously your keys. You got your functions on your steering wheel, so your volume up and down, switching your tracks, answering and ending your call. That's your engine limiter. That's to go in your cruise settings. And that's your reset and set and altering your speed on your cruise. Your exhaust brake is on the right here. Also, when you're in manual mode, up and down. Indicator stalk, windscreen wipers, horn, which I'm not going to hoot because there's somebody out there and windscreen washers if you can see that there we go good old wiping action and before i forget about it down here you've got the ac system so that's but I'm not going to go through all of it there's several different variants of these you know this isn't a full automatic one but it's near enough it's it does the job very well no complaints with and also some cubby holes I love these uh, drinks holders here you can separate them like that so the way so it's nice and smart got a table for up here sorry for my cabling lock and unlock reversing siren dimmer stopper so you don't make any noises when reversing that's your spot lamp bits. We'll just turn that up so we can get a bit more light in here. And that's also to brighten and dim the lights a wee bit as well. And obviously a nice storage area just above. You also got a 12 volt down in the storage area at the bottom and a tray 4 volt on the left. Coming over to the left of the cab. You got a fuse board underneath this. That's where your fuses are. The passenger seat has the same functionality as the driver's seat, bar the armrest. So you can raise that, you can heat it, you can alter it in all sorts of different ways. It's even air suspended. I've got it down, pardon me, at the moment, which is all good. And we come above the passenger's area into the first storage locker which I use for my brew kit so that's my brew kit area and just to the left of it there's a storage cubby here you got one behind it as well in the middle locker which I'll bring you back so you can see a bit better is a microwave works pretty well I've got to show my plates in there and bowls which is all good, still got the new smell. <laughs> and some little cubby spaces in between which you can utilise. In the middle here you have what you can see, a cubby hole, stuff from truck vest, all that stuff. And up here, an air pod. Yay! Let's see, power on. Set, uh, I think it's to set the different temperatures and that's to go through different speeds of cooling. We'll turn it off in a moment because <laughs> we don't need that on at the moment. In this locker is my general work locker, all stuff I need to have at hand. Not the most organised it's been because it's literally I go in there, grab something, or chuck it back in, and at the end of the day, I sort it out. Obviously a tachograph, I'm on rest at the moment because we're parked up for the night. You got some more cubby holes here and here. Which obviously I store my bits. There's also an air gun plug-in beside the driver's seat, which the funny thing is, that's a Scania air gun <laughs> and it fits in very nicely. It actually works really well in this cab. Amazingly well. Up in here, first rear locker. 
which is more of a odds and sods sort of locker. As you can see, you've got my coat, spare bits and bobs, washing stuff, spare bedding. And in the middle locker is my clothes, laptop, more clothes behind it, and just general stuff like that. And stuff for the channel. In here is another just general storage sort of locker, so spare drinks in here. That's a container to put all my light bulbs in, which I need to sort out shortly. And generally, it's more my transit locker. So this generally has like spare rags in, and it, you know, generally has a lot of space in this locker all the time. So if I do need to store something, I can do. On the back of the bed, mind my mascots as well, is some storage cubbies. More storage cubbies, I need to put that mascot up shortly on the bed, might then mind my iPad as well, obviously bed. You got controls on the back here for your night heater, up and down and for your lighting. So we're not the lighting off at the minute. You also got a nice nickel spotlight when you're reading. And up here, just so I can show you, is you got your lights here in this one that's more of your map light so you can angle it you got your rails you got your night lighting here and you got some nice and it ha has got some night lighting hidden away oh i didn't notice that so that push back in there you go that's a bit, bit better obviously a height marker which i shall highlight a minute ago you also have underneath here some nice hooks and you got some on the opposite side as well well, let's see what's underneath the bed, shall we? Let's make sure I don't lose anything in the process. You can just lift the bed up. Spare paperwork in the tray there. And basically weighs paperwork for work. Some of it still needs to be sorted out, I must admit. But it's not as bad as it was. That's my water, food, and that storage area in there, and obviously crisps. That's my more organised spare paper storage area. That's my side locker with like my spare boots, waterproof stuff, etc. etc. Really good cupboard, really good storage underneath this bed. It's amazing, it blows me away. So much common sense underneath here. These all do, these two do pull out in here. You got a fridge or it can be a freezer, but not both. Just so you're aware, uh, and so this pulls out as well. Also got a big cup holder here with a cubby hole just there. So I'm gonna put my spit back down. And it's so much better than the Scania. It let's turn you back around. Hello again. So yeah, my opinion of the cab in, in the DAF. Spot on. Spot on DAF, seriously. I mean, for an older design, this is just so well thought through. I mean, I don't say that you couldn't do anything else with it. It could do, there's always options, there's always ways to make it better. But overall, as a driver, this cab is amazing and I had my brother in it last weekend at truck fest and he loved that seat he really did you know you had the same functionality as I have in my seat bar the armrest which in many other trucks you do not have you know it's normally just a rigid seat <laughs> you know see for every single bump and all that on it but as I say it is what it is and I said the only other truck that I know of that can compete with this is probably your next gen Scania. And that is seriously compete within the cab area. You know, there's not many other trucks. You could argue maybe Mercedes with the flat floor. You could argue. But I'll take this over Mercedes any day. 
you know, any day of the week. And I know I have a thing against Mercedes, and it's justified in my book. I know some people may love Mercedes. I'm not saying don't like Mercedes. It's just I I I just don't like the gearbox mainly in them and the build quality. The build quality in this is actually surprisingly very good. You know I'm yeah you know it's solid stuff. You know if I was doing that in the Mercedes, it will feel like real cheap plastic, and it feels some some of it seriously feels like if you gave it a little bit of a knock you'll go straight through it <laughs> I know yes those are areas that you don't expect people to knock and bash against and but you think Mercedes a quality brand really <laughs> but yeah as you know well know by now I am really blown away with this truck I'm gonna take you outside see if the filming outside comes through and then I'll do my sum up which I know that was sort of a sum up but Let's take you outside. I'll show you around the whole truck while we're at it as well. So I'll see you in a second. Hello, yet again, we're outside now, so hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm going to take you around the truck and hopefully chat you what each bit is, you know, show you around basically. So what we'll do, we'll spin you around and we'll get cracking. So this is the DAF XF 530. 2019 wedge as you may see I really do like the looks of this truck you know it has a real good presence about it it has the, obviously the mirror protectors standardish you no know, grill area LED I think it's LED indicators or is it bulb it could be bulb indicators and it's got LED side lights headlights I think the hydrogen I believe Obviously the windshield, sorry if she's a bit dirty. Just have been able to wash her this week properly. Up there you've got the sensors in the top of the windshield for the all the driving aids. Obviously a light bar with the beacons. I've got them all going for you. So you can see what they look like roughly. And you may see the air pod on top. So obviously the air intake on the side here, on the right hand side of the truck. Obviously a nice 530, just to remind you it's a 530. I really like the mirrors on this truck as well, absolutely really well laid out. Obviously looks really good, you can even hear the indicator from out here. You've got Alcoa alloy wheels on the trapped unit, so they're a bit dirty. Just to show you in underneath here, not, not that, uh, yeah, you may be interested. That is something I'm working on polishing up, the airbox. You've got the pump system, or the cooler for the pump system. Is that big silver thing with the dials to tell you the pressures. And so, as an oil gauge, you only read the oil gauge on this when it's in use. Otherwise it will show you an inaccurate feature, or accurate amount, obviously pipe or the air intake system. Rear spoiler kit, Susie's, and catwalk. The only thing I have noticed is I found these bolts were loose the other day and I had to tighten up one or two of the bolts that hold the catwalk on today. So, something to keep an eye on, I might mention that to DAF. I'm not over concerned, it's point because it is still brand new and it's all teething. Obviously my tanker. Sorry for the kids in the background. Obviously a nice clean fifth wheel, more or less, underneath there. Don't see that often. More of the blue catwalk, still in pretty good state. I'm trying to keep it in good state. I would love to get to a jet wash soon just to get a bit of that oily off. Underneath there. Obviously we've got a tag on this truck. Really love the tag. It, it, it's really extremely manoeuvrable and it feels more stable on the DAF. Probably because we've got a longer 
overall is a very long frame on the truck on the DAF. Longer than the Scania, believe it or not. Which has its advantages and you could argue its disadvantages. And you can tell it's a pro truck, there's no run up ramp on this one. So you do not want to give it to your Muppets. And <laughs> don't worry, when I hook up I do I like check a hundred times that I'm not even remotely near that. <laughs> for obvious reasons. So in other words, not for your normal everyday day driver. No offense to day drivers, but you're you know, yeehaw, hop in the cab, hook up as quick as you can, don't care what you scratch, driver. <laughs> But you know, it's not common you see a truck these days with no run-ups, so I thought I'd highlight that in. More of the tanker there. I so said it's a single pot tanker this one, as you may know. Obviously my storage on the side, I've got my blue wash bottles, some of my smaller piping. Not too sure on these wheels here. What the May have been no carriers, I'm not too sure on these ones. These are the original ones that were on originally. Obviously my toolbox. Obviously rear lights, markers. All your valve controls, rotate your machine. Because that's the pump there that will pump in or out of the tank your valves obviously your pump control on the top beside the light switch to your left of it and obviously got some spot work lights as well with that light that switch controls you obviously got your hookups the white one is if you're pumping or pumping out and the other one is if you're getting loaded without you having to pump. In that box there is all your controls, you got your way system and on this side we got three of our larger hoses that we can plug in and more or less the same as most other trucks. We've got our obviously a parking brake, our shunt and a suspension dump valve because we do not have a bit like on the curtain siders the uh, one that you can sort of select how low you lower it it's the either dump it or you have air in the system obviously your le legs the winding wheel on the left hand side of the truck now we're going to skip a bit over this because it's more or less the same as the other side obviously nice clean fifth wheel <laughs> Sorry, I'm highlighting the clean fifth wheel where it's still clean. And we got how many coin slots? 700 litre fuel tank. I don't doubt him, but it's still big. And then here, we got our 125 litre and blue tank. Obviously, an upgrade over the normal DAF. System. That stuff. On both sides you've got storage lockers, you've got one on this side, one on the other side, we're not going to show you in, because they look like any storage locker, it just has loads of stuff in it, and all that. Hopefully I've unlocked this side, yes I have. Sorry for the rubbish bin. And down here, because I didn't know where this was originally, is the bonnet release catch. If you pull that, it releases the bonnet. I had no idea where it was on the death until I got, <laughs> got my boss to show me because even he said he struggled to find it. And we're underneath the bonnet here. Obviously your steering linkages and all that. I think that's if you get towed, the airline tie-ins. That's where your coolant, engine oil, and screen wash. And you got your big radiators in there. Big radiators. Obviously 
the electrical control. Up here, you just get a pull cord to lure it back down. So, like this. And you can tell it's a 5.30 because on the other ones, apparently, what I've heard off Savos, this is blocked off on the small engine ones. Interesting fact. So what I'll do, I'll get back in the cab and we'll do our sum, summary of the truck. So hello again, let's put the lights back on in here. See if this enlightens us a bit better. So before we go into summary, I thought I'd show you down on the arm controls down here. If you can see it properly. So those are your mirror alteration buttons there. That's the select which mirror mirrors you want and in the middle you got the heated mirror option and down here you got window controls on both sides I realise I forgot about that and just here roughly let's get you up here <laughs> this is a bit awkward is your light selector here so I just realised I may have not covered that I may have missed one or two things I haven't gone over every feature of this truck it makes it has everything in terms of electronical driving aids you know that i'm aware of that you could have on there the only thing that's missing is the air horn i know you can see that but <laughs> sorry for waving around i'm holding your one hand at the moment um you know there's a few things that i'm looking at maybe getting the air horns and the led rear lights on the tractor unit because it has standard light bulb tractor unit which has its advantages so I may still keep it as it is. So we'll just put you down here so it's a bit easier for me to hold you. And sorry for the creaking. Because I've got you on my tripod. And I'm just trying holding you with the tri tripod. And we'll see how this comes out. Hopefully this is a really good uh, in terms of quality of the video. Really good. I know the steadiness might need work. So you may need to get a gimbal for this one. But as as that, let's sum up the truck. Absolutely amazed by the truck. It's, you know, better than I thought it was going to be. A lot better. You know, I, I wasn't expecting a bad truck, but not, you know, I was expecting to come in and go, yeah, this is okay. But mm, I still wish I was in the Scania. But actually, I, I know drivers who have come into DAF and still want to be back in the Scania. Uh, I sympathise them. The main issue that they bring up is power. This it doesn't quite have the same amount of power as the 580 for obvious reasons. I heard you can get these chipped, so you could probably get it back up there. But to me... The engine is powerful enough, even though we are max grossed most of the time. As long as you start learning the engine mode and how to get the most out of the auto box as you can, it's good. It is good. I mean, I hope admit in the Scania you do have on the V8s a bit better pull. It has a better thing, torque range and power range on it. But actually, it. This is closely behind it in that in those terms. You know, it's, it's not as powerful, but it does the job well. And it's very fuel efficient. And that's one of the reasons why it doesn't come across as powerful. But it still gets the job done. Why this truck wins it with me is just, as you've seen, the creature comforts. The camera doesn't quite bring the space this cab across accurately. You know, it's... It's like being in a home. It's like... It sounds bad, this, but... It, it is basically very comfortable to live in this cab. And I dare, not, dare say this, better than the top line. I mean, it's... It puts the top line to shame. With how good this cab is. The next gen... In terms of inside the cab, probably 50-50. It has a flat floor, which if you like a complete flat floor, next gen has it pretty much on that front. This doesn't have a complete, it has a slight hump in the middle, 
but I I kind of like a slight hump in the middle. I like the divide in the room, shall I say. I see the advantage of a complete flat floor, but I see the advantage of having the hump as well. As De long as it's not too big, and hopefully there's not too many puns coming out here. So I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you probably imagine I am very, very amazed with this truck. I will make you some more in-depth videos into the functionality on this truck in the future. It Today is a general review of the truck in terms of a rough overview so you get to see the buttons bits and bobs not absolutely everything i am still learning all two things in here and optimizing things a little bit better but if i was own operator i was looking for a truck daf would be probably at my top top of my list it's also considerably cheaper than buying a Scania. This if you're looking brand new and all that. You know, and as the boss said, you know, he he say saved an awful lot of money for the equivalent spec Scania. You know, and as you've seen, it's pretty well spec. I also have a free uh, I actually have a proper kettle system in the back of the locker up in the top as well. Which I need to find where to put that, but that's to be dealt with at DAF. So it's another feature that is with the truck, obviously the AirPod. The driving position this truck is really comfortable as well. I mean, I can't fault it. The mirrors are excellent on this truck. I mean, it's one well, of the best sets of mirrors I've seen. And I was chatting today about the Mercedes mirror cam thing today. And I dare say, in terms of being a function of a mirror, which these obviously are mirrors, I think they're better than even the mirror cam in terms of the quality of the size of views you get. Yes, the mirror cam moves and it follows around. It, it is cool. Don't get me wrong. It is a cool bit of tech. But that's for my debate about mirror cams, which I may release out. I'll we'll see. See how it's come out as a video. So I think in the rankings of my trucks, this is a very close, probably sharing number one position with the next gen. I would say the next gen is probably a little bit better in some ways in terms of plushness and, you know, quality of spec. And when I say quality of spec, that wasn't a hit on the quality on the DAF. It is really good, the quality on the DAF. It just feels a bit more premium in the next gen. I openly admit that. I know, yes, the colour on the dash in this truck might not be everybody's taste. That brownie colour, I understand, might not be everybody's taste. Some people can't live that colour, but others can. You know, and I, it doesn't bother me. I actually quite like it in a way. You know, it's something a bit different. You know, it's pleasant enough atmosphere in here. There's nothing that I could go, I absolutely hate this for, you know. Um, any negatives? Uh, size of maybe the loose bolts I'm finding, which I so I'll bring up a DAF. The entertainment system, how it operates on the audio control needs to be sorted out but I think that's a probably when because this is upgraded stereo system you're one of the top ones you can have because it's also got nav in there as well I just think it's just been not plugged in properly because the other drivers that have the exact same spec as this theirs work perfectly you know I don't have the same I'm not going to go through the issues because it's not necessarily an issue with DAF, but it's probably who installed it. As I had issue with the AirPod as well, with them putting the wrong fuse in. So it's probably whoever's installed these upgrades, maybe just rushed the job just a little bit. But as far as now, I've had no major kill issues with the truck so far, touch wood. You know, nothing to write home about. The AC system in this truck's amazing. Not including the AirPod. You know, the aircon this is so good. 
The heating system is really good as well, so I've actually had to use it this week, it's been a bit more chillier. The heated seats are amazing, and the air cooled as well. So I've forgotten to mention that. There was actually so many features in this truck, I probably have forgotten some of them to mention them towards you. But if you notice something, you go, what's that, or you miss this, add it down below in the comments. Uh, as far as that, I know this has been a very long video. Very long walk around the truck, talk about the truck. I've tried to keep it fairly brief, but you know me, I like my trucks. And I get a bit carried away. <laughs> I know I get carried away. And hopefully, this has come out quite well. Aside from the, obviously the noise of my tripod, you know, making creaking noises. I do apologise. We will come up with solutions of filming as we go. More improvements for the channel. But this is an improvement for the channel, this camera, to obviously do more high quality filming. So, any updates to the channel? Nothing major as such. If I, uh, if I have any updates, I always try to update you at the end of my videos where possible. I also do a monthly update with you where possible. So uh, there'll probably be an update video imminently as well. So, as far as that, hopefully this video has been informative or maybe a bit too much. If I've missed something and you want to see something, I will try and sort that out for you. Just comment down below or just ask questions if you're not sure on anything I have showed you. Like, if you like, where's this? I might try and explain where it is. Or, you know, if you want to know something within reason, you know, that you feel that I missed, please ask. But as I said, this is still a brand new truck to me, so I'm still learning some of the features, getting used to it, sorting the cab out still, you know, getting in other words really comfortable in the truck. But com as I said, compared to Scania, top line, yeah, uh, this is a driver's truck. This is a five star, five out of five, you know, I mean, yes, there's always improvements, and all, and this truck's always been added to, and it's proof, proof that DAF build really good trucks, and they believe in their product. And I've I've come from being a reasonably hardcore Scania fan. I'm not saying I'm not a Scania fan anymore. I am. Hence my Phoenix up in the back. I still love my Scanias. I, I still would stand by a top line, but. DAF are winning me over massively. I'm coming to be a bit of a DAF fanboy as well. So I've got two favourite truck makes now, DAF and Scania. Oh, actually three. I love Volvos as well. Don't get it wrong. I really, really do love Volvos, but I haven't driven as many as I would love to. You know, I wouldn't say it's hard to find a company as a Volvo, but just the roll of the dice. I've just not been in the Volvo. You know, the only time I've operated fully full time in the Volvo was quite a while ago. You know, while I was doing day work before I was vlogging. So, yeah, that's another story for another day. But this is definitely in my top three trucks, which would be obviously the FH, Volvo FH, the next gen Scania, and obviously the DAF XF Super Space Cap. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, in the spec with the rear cupboards, which is awesome. Yes, you can get a top bunk as well before anybody asks. So, yet again, if you like what you've seen, hit that big like button. No. Oh, like button, not light button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It would seriously be appreciated. And I want to say a massive thank you to all my recent subscribers. I have been blown away with the amount I've had over the last week or so. It's, it honestly, it's been amazing. I am li literally in shock over it. I've, you know, every time I look at the number, going, it was only that the other day. And to all my original subscribers, you know, seriously, thank you very much for being subscribed to my channel and supporting the channel. You know, also to those who have watched 
the videos and don't subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Also, as I said, hit the like or hit the dislike. Feel free to comment any questions as I mentioned. And I'll probably see you in the next one. Over and out. I met him on a sunny day in late July and everything turned upside down. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by. I couldn't get him off my mind. I told him I want that great love. Like standing in the middle of a bonfire. You don't know how you got there, but you hold tight. Knowing that you can't get burned. Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other. I honestly don't know. And tell me how we messed up. Drifting away from each other. Didn't want to let you go. Carry on on your own Ever since I got a good look in his eyes I just knew that he was special He said he wanted to take it slow But I couldn't help that I wanted to take it to the next level Cause I wanted that great love Like standing in the middle of a bonfire You don't know how you got there But you hold tight Knowing that you can't get burned Just tell me how he Upside down. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by. I couldn't get him off my mind.